Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV taking a look at a 235 Fox Mountain by Northwood. This is their very smallest fifth reel. Fifth reel? Yeah, whatever. Fifth wheel from this entire family of RVs. And this thing is B-I-L-T built. As opposed to a B-L-T, which sounds pretty delicious right about now. I like bacon. This is a smaller, shorter RV. Not made to be lightweight. Made to be exceptionally strong, long-lasting. Something that is designed to really handle long-term rigors of ownership and a lot of towing and going down the road. From a better suspension, better tires, up through a custom-built chassis. Uh, completely custom-built in-house woodwork through the entire RV uh, and and so much more um, the buck stops here accountability and quality control goes into this brand and they have earned so much of my respect and reading the comments that I see from other folks who have had these they echo that people say all the time they build one heck of a product now um, there's a lot of great things about this RV. It's, it's a short length. It's, uh, you know, an easy towing, easy to park kind of RV. A lot of fifth wheels, they get long and strong and down to get the camping on, but they are not easy to get in smaller camping spaces. This one right here, uh, plenty of living space and like, uh, you know, sofa on the back, dinette in the slide, great kitchen with deceptively good storage in this one. But again, the winner for me on this is just the overall rugged construction that we're going to break down through as we go through this video. But I tell you what, if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired of sleeping on backbreaker death wafers, you need to check out the mattress and the bedding that they're using in these. It is what I call down with the thickness. It, uh, I, I've never seen Frankly, not even a towable nor motorized manufacturer use the kind of bedding that they're using in here. Now, the downside is this thing is hefty, 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 and I haven't closed the slide up yet. I'm suspecting the road mode travel access is limited, but we're going to check out all that and more. And if you appreciate us going out of our way to get you all kinds of new footage and still finding first things that we've never uh, recorded on this channel in like 14 years or whatever it's been, hit subscribe, like our video. And let's get in there. All right. Well, we get to begin the inside part of our tour today with an apology from me. You're going to hear, like, I'm going to gush a lot about how these are put together. And then you're going to see where this little cushion down here on the, the edge of the dinette is busted off. That's this idiot's fault. I scooted my fat butt out of that thing and I just, I don't know, apparently my butt ripped the thing off. So that's on me. That's not on Northwood. And although these do have a couple modern embellishments, for the most part, this is like, this is taking a trip down memory lane for me. And it, it hits me right in the member berries, basically. Um, because for the longest time, like, this is what camping looked like, you know? Now, uh, it's, it's either the thing you like most about Northwood or the thing you like least about Northwood. The fact that five years from now, maybe 20 years from now, the interior decors that they're rocking out are going to probably be eerily similar to what you're seeing right here. This is just what they do. This is their look. Now, we are looking at a lighter fabric color on the seating. They do offer uh, a little bit of a variation there. They also, also offer yeah, a little bit darker tone as well, but they, uh, they have stuck to their guns on the HOA-approved brown. Um, a lot of people will say it's a little more timeless, and some lighter grays, the farmhouse whites, all that stuff, it can certainly look really good. Um, at the end of the day, though, plain old brown just always seems to be hanging around, whether you want it to or not. Now, something I'm kind of keying into here, the campsite windows, while not over-the-top amazing, actually, from the seating perspective, when you sit down, not terrible. A, a lot of the window coverage, admittedly, is going to be over on the poop side of the RV on this one, or the back side of the RV of this one, whichever uh, one you might be looking at. And as we're taking a look around here, I want to start talking about something that, like, you can't see. But if you go out to La Grande, Oregon, where these are made, one of the things that is uh, really, really cool to take a look at is actually their cabinet shop. Because all of the woodworking and everything, they have their own woodworking shop in-house. In now, a lot of RV manufacturers have some variety of cabinet shop. Like, that itself is not earth-shattering. But most of the time, these factories are working off of, um, you know, pre-assembled pieces and whatnot, things that they make. Northwood makes all of their own stuff. None of this is pre-made. None of it is uh, pre-purchased. And what I like about that is, let's say right on the assembly line, they find out that a panel is wrong or a, a cabinet was cut wrong. They can just go make a new one and they can get it right from the factory. And because they're controlling it all in-house, there's only one finger to point to. There's there's no finger pointing, which can often leave a, uh, a customer left out high and dry in the weeds, you know? 
every it's like the buck stops here everything comes straight from them and uh i i think that kind of mentality and process doing it all themselves is a a huge reason why the general uh you know the the customer feedback on the quality control of these is just exceptionally positive in an industry that frankly a lot of people don't trust in that regard right now you know i i ain't gonna lie i've seen plenty of things that make me go come on guys we can do better we need to do better and this is an example of a company that is like look at this a side and a backsplash over a bigger 22 inch oven um and stove tap as compared to the small 16 inch easy bake ovens um all solid surface countertops and you might notice a couple of various little finger pulls on those when we start going through all the kitchen stuff i'm going to get all that opened up for you and uh kind of show you case what uh, you know where everything is in here now over by our control panel one of the other things that you'll see up here is the the some of your light switches they're up high enough where if you have little grandkids for the weekend they can't play with stuff and accidentally burn things up which i did to my grandparents also our solar controller over here is 40 amps straight from the factory standard and I love the just the little touch of radius work. But you know what I really appreciate? Like, if you look up, they use just that simple little, like, pencil-thin trim line around their cabinetry. They don't use these big, like, two-inch, three-inch, it's called gimp trims, where, that helps cover uh, gaps in workmanship because they're just holding themselves to a higher standard. Now, they've done a couple little modern things like the stereo, the TV that pivots around. That's a little bit more updated. That's a 12-volt TV, by the way. Um, they've added some USB plugs in there. But take a look at the, uh, the thickness of these dinette cushions. And if you get to see one of these in person, the, uh, the, the firmness of it, it's... It's not chintz. It is solid. It is well done kind of stuff. Now, they are still doing carpeting in the slides, but some people like it when their toes are warm. And while we're looking down here, let's pop that drawer open and start taking a look around all the storage. Now, obviously, that dinette can fold down into a sleeper, but look what you're sitting on. Like, when they cut the windows out of those laminated walls, they don't just throw that stuff away. They try to keep as much stuff out of landfills as they can, and they repurpose that stuff as like bench seating supports in their dinettes and whatnot where they can it is it, it is a way way stronger than like a uh you know sitting on a a little sheet of like luon or something like that like you find in a lot of rvs now uh over here in the kitchen they got that cool little bottom kind of swing open pantry but you see that like i said a little hockey puck circle you can pop your finger in i love that they give you a space for a wastebasket built right in as well as uh, giving you a place to like drop stuff down through the counter to get into it. And with that wastebasket right by the door, that makes it very, very easy to open the door, throw something away, close the door, and not have to go trekking in and out of the RV or have a separate trash can outside. And it's that kind of little stuff where I can look at this. And now I know the history of this company, but this was founded and made by people who actually used the RVs that they built. So there's is there maybe, you know, does it have all of the, the sizzle and flash of some RVs? No, but it's got the guts. It's got the guts like crazy. Did you spot that extra set of household outlets, by the way, down there under the table? That can be super. What would you use that for? I'm kind of curious because a lot of people like, I think me, it makes sense. Like, yeah, that'd be a laptop station for me. That's a perfect uh, answer, but maybe, you know, not for everybody. Um, this is an eight cubic foot gas electric refrigerator freezer. And that is all they offer. Northwood uh, is not currently offering anything in the way of 12 volt. Uh, built out here in the Pacific Northwest, this is uh, one of the areas where, you know, boondocking, camping away from parks is exceptionally common and popular. And they cater to that first. Oh, wow. Just the dumbest little things that they thought of. You can tell somebody actually went out and used this and tried it out and said, hey, the bathroom door for the toilet swung open and I didn't like that. So they put a little doorstop up on the ceiling. Like I've walked past that thing six times and didn't even notice it. By the way, you see up here, um, you see that little piece of trim, how it's kind of radius like that. Uh, that's because you might've noticed uh, back here in the living area, this does have that nice open feeling vaulted ceiling. Now I think from the floor to the highest point in here, it's like eight foot and a couple inches, but it opens everything right up and feels nice. Not to mention, I've always felt double vaulted trusses just feel a little stronger. This might be a problem for some folks, however. 
It's just an accordion door closing off the upper deck to lower deck. This is where some of those classic features, um, you know, while nostalgic may come back to, to, to bite them in some areas, but I'm going to leave that up to you. Once again, since this is made out for Boondock Central, one of the things that they uh, include up here, standard is one of those big XL vent fans. And you're going to see in just a minute here, it comes with a cool little remote control. Now, you may also notice, like, it looks almost like there's something wrong with that trim. That's actually, there's a privacy curtain track over here on the left. So that if somebody's sleeping on the dinette or the sleeper sofa and you're up here in the front bedroom and they need to get to the bathroom, they could do so without coming in and, you know, staring at you while you're sleeping, which is not you're really what I think a lot of people are looking for. Now, I try to share the good with the bad. I try to be fair. This has what I lovingly refer to as the angle breaker step of death over here that you haven't seen in a lot of more modern fifth wheels since, but... It's also the reason a lot of other more modern fifth wheels keep getting bigger, keep getting taller, and I would say keep getting heavier, and that is true, but it's not exactly like this is a um, <coughs> a lightweight by any means. Uh, by the way, a three-quarter ton pickup is my generalized recommendation on this. I don't think that this is going to be a good fit for a half ton, given um, some of the weight capacities that we're looking at, and uh, typically, again, these being taken off-grid. That, by the way, this is, like I said, one of the best beds I've ever seen. Not in just a towable RV. I don't even want to limit it like that in any RV. It's absolutely awesome. Now, once you step up, yeah, you're going to do a little Scrooge McDuckin up there, but taking a look here, you do at least have that cool little storage chest down below. Now, you have your own drawers and like dre hanging dresser storage, not hanging closet storage on both sides of this. There's household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. Plus, there's also that handy-dandy remote control right there. You can set to manual mode, auto mode. You can just help keep the air flowing. Uh, it, that thing can crank up and down. Like, I love the sound of a loud fan at night. I would love to have one of those in the bedroom in my RV. Like, that's that's the kind of thing I really like. Actually, what I did is I got a noise app on my phone. When I travel and I'm in a hotel room, I, I, I make a sound like a fan. <laughs> now, over here... This is going to be something to really consider. That is your only exclusive hanging storage in this entire RV. So kind of keep that in mind. And if you do want to put a TV in the bedroom, kind of a little classic position for it right over there. Now, we've also, of course, got ourselves the commode. Which, again, as you can see, is that classic closet style. Now, at my size... I fit in here pretty nicely, although that little tag hanging down in front of my face was a little annoying. I, was, I, I wasn't I was coming anywhere close to bonking my head on this little linen cabinet right above me right here. None of that was a concern whatsoever. You have another one of those big vent fans here, by the way. So we are Fajita Friday Fume Fighting Certified. We have ourselves the uh, Take Me to Your Leader uh, alien kind of uh, towel hold backs right there. And then as I back up, this could be another area where somebody's going to look at this and say, man, you had me uh, until that shower, and that is an all-stop. That is just a classic corner uh, kind of angular shower. That being said, they are not all the same. If you like everything else about this RV except that shower, what I recommend is get to see one of these in person, and you may find that's not as bad as you think. Because remember when I called it a classic corner angular shower? Classic showers were often bigger than today's angular showers. They got a little bit smaller in a lot of modern RVs. And I want to show you how it's got, got like the little garden tub with a seat. But you see how wide that is? If you actually need to sit up or down, if you need elbow room to get soaked up, that shower is way better than what you would think. So that's where I'm saying... Don't judge that book by its cover. Try it on for size like a pair of pants uh, before you say yay or nay. And closing up the slide here for road mode. This is kind of what I was afraid of because they use a big full deep slide on this thing. Full depth slide is probably the more proper way to say that. What that means is that your dining and that peninsula countertop, they start getting into a shoving match where they say who gets to keep the space or not. Now, there might be a couple ways around this. If you put that table down for transit, with this being that Easy Up Dream Dinette down, uh, you don't necessarily have to do that. But if you put it down for transit, you can kind of step around it a little bit more easily. You can always sit your backside on it and pivot, sit and pivot uh, kind of method. 
Or here's the thing. This kind of slide system, it doesn't care if you only open it partially. But listen to this. You hear how that seal, how tight that seal is, but how quiet the slide is? They're just using better motors, better seals, things that are just going to hold up a little bit. Now, if you just want to touch that and you want to crack that so you can get in here and uh, maybe sneak up to the bathroom or pack up your bedroom with your clothes for camping before you go, you can do that. But you don't want to leave that slide partially open uh, and try to use it. You don't want to sit in it. You don't want to do that like if it's raining or anything because the seals, as tight as they are, aren't really fully engaged the way that they could and or should be. So there's a little pro tip for you from Uncle Josh. Now these are a standard eight foot body. I'm operating from a little bit of uh, memory out here, but I do believe it's Big Brother Arctic Fox is wide body. Um, the, uh, the thing though is they basically share the same construction. You've got those uh, true two inch thick sidewalls and they are what I call double Asdell. They're Asdell on the inside and outside layers. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the default windows on this are going to be sliding max airflow windows. But as you see here, we got a smexy little upgrade. You can swap shin those out for frameless dual pane windows like you're looking at right here. Um, they, a lot of these manufacturers like to call it a thermal window. I, I'm very outspoken about the fact that it does not really significantly increase any sort of thermal values. What it does do though, is it knocks down on a ton of noise from outside the RV. Now I really like how their docking center and their pass-through compartment are completely separate from one another. And uh, yes, it is. I was afraid this was going to be a, uh, a two-headed sewer monster, which is a new nerdism uh, thanks to Mr. Steve Z, regular viewer. So thank you once again, Mr. Steve Z, for all your regular visits and that awesome new uh, nerdism. What I mean by that is this RV has a single sewer outlet. I was afraid it was actually going to have two, but that's awesome that you only need one stinky slinky hookup and you don't got to juggle anything. Because when you're talking black tank stuff, I don't think anyone really wants to do any juggling. Although we literally do have a man on our staff, a train juggler, who was legit Ronald McDonald for a time. That is a real thing, not just some stupid stuff I'm making up. Look at the front compartment on this, though. Small RV with a giant front cargo compartment and it's wide open because if you want to gen prep that or put a generator into it, you see a little punch out on that baggage door, it can be done, son. And there are just an extremely short list of fifth wheels of this size or even bigger that are gen capable. That's to me a really outstanding quality. But it's, it's the little details that I really like on these. So your baggage doors are slam latches. This is our battery compartment, but look how they put that extra little plate. Like everybody and their brother does the same twist latch, but they put that extra little plate right there so it doesn't actually like get over tightened and crush the door. Because if the door crushes and it goes out of square, then uh, you could have a leak on your hands. And that's not fun. So just right from the factory level, again, they're doing some things to just combat a fast-paced workmanship environment. But once again, one of the coolest things about Northwood is how realistic they are at, at, at making sure that like, we have to get this thing right before it leaves the factory. They're also like, you're saying, okay, so this is a brand made on the West Coast. What if I wanna buy one of those from one of your stores? But you know, I live in, I don't know, Massachusetts or whatever. Northwood knows that they're not necessarily, they don't have nationwide coverage. So they are extremely good about working with other vendors, uh, about getting their customers' uh, warranty needs fulfilled. Although uh, the impression that I'm getting from a lot of folks who um, you know have uh, had had work done, it's been pretty sparing. I haven't heard a lot of big nightmare horror stories related to Northwood. Um, oh, another option that you have on these is over here on the back, you can add that little accessory receiver hitch and then you see that we have reverse travel lighting and you can, I tell you what, it's uh, it, it's nice climbing that ladder when it's all the way over here next to the wall. It gives my fat butt something to lean against, but giving you a little peek up there at the roof line. Um, I, I like how their big vents have the little clips, the little ears where if you wanted to add like a max air vent cover, you can do so without actually, you know, screwing anything into the RV. And you see that little solar panel. It's a 45 watt battery tender but this has a 40 amp controller. If you want to add more solar into that Zamp prep plug, you absolutely can. Plus you can get an additional 175 watts straight from the factory. And again, that's on top of the existing 40. So what is that like 230? Oh, I need to get some caffeine. The math is coming hard. 
Now, if you like what you see here, you're like, I like that store, but I'd like a little bit more of it. That is a little bit small for my taste. Remember, this is the smallest fifth wheel this entire family of RVs makes. And if you want just a, an extra step up and a little bit of Ritz and glitter, check out the, um, the Arctic Fox fifth wheels. Those are the big brother of this. But the coolest part is everything that we just learned about with Fox Mountain, they do all that plus more in the Arctic Fox series. So there's, you're not making any sacrifices. There's no trade-offs. It just gets bigger and better. Although that means it does get heavier and more expensive. So I suppose there is a couple trade-offs, but neither here nor there. Giving you some fair information like that, that's what we like to do. When you're ready, we're ready. In the meantime, you can check the pricing and availability via that link in the video description. And until next time, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.